All right. Um, so this video is going to be about just kind of some uh, some things you could you can put on your note card, and I think um, all the stuff that I'm about to list is is um, already in. Uh, I think it's called the exam through study guide, and somewhere in the modules. But um, just to reiterate it and kind of put everything in short form or short as I can, because because um, that document is kind of wordy, just a little bit. Um, still really good to look at, and you should. But um, so the first thing from from chapter five, because I think this test is chapter five and six. Um, first thing, uh, oops, PV is equal to NRT. Remember that. Um, and then for for these problems, R is equal to zero point zero eight two zero six liters per atmosphere mole per Kelvin. Uh, just remember that, and remember the units for. V is going to be in liters, N is moles, um, T in Kelvin, pressure in ATM, and then R, well, I already wrote that. Um, so, yeah. so, yeah, there's that. Um, the final initial problems, and I think, I think Diana said, um, She's not going to test you on the actual names of the laws, like Boyle's law, or or anything like that. So, um, something you can remember is just um, P one V one over N one T one is equal to P two V two over N two T two, and this is just like putting um, this is just putting P V over N R T equal to the same thing P or PV over NRT, but we just canceled out the R's because those are constant. Um, and then for if you're using uh, this over here, just cancel out whatever's constant and keep whatever is changing. And uh, and yeah, just solve for solve for your your final. And I like to set it up as like this side's the final. So if you're solving for like a final volume, isolate for V two, and then that's what you would do. Um, Um, it's not necessary. Another thing, um, but the the molar volume it, it can help, and like I, I guess it can give you small shortcuts here and there. Um, it's not. I wouldn't like commit it to memory because you can also just use the ideal gas law to get it. But the molar volume is that um, every a ideal gas occupies twenty two point four liters per one mole of that gas, and this is going to be at STP. This is another um, another review term because. It, it, there may be a question on the test to ask about something at STP without stating anything, and you need to know that STP is is equal to two hundred and seventy three uh, Kelvin one atmosphere. Sorry about the notification. Um, okay. Um, another thing, um, like you guys saw on the mock exam, there was a couple of questions asking about partial pressures and mole fractions and all that. Um, this right here is very powerful. This is the, the mole fraction of something is equal to the moles of that over the moles over the moles total, which is also equal to the pressure of that over the total pressure. This only works for a mixture of gases. Um, and just like in the Mach exam, you might get one of these. Um, I guess we can put it in terms of what we had in the Mach exam. We got the partial pressures and we, we and we could get chi and then we solved for this to get the uh, the moles of N2 gas. So yeah, that's really powerful. You should have that to memory. Um, um, and another one of the problems, uh, it gave you some information about the gas and you were trying to convert that to something else in an equation. So um, for the most part, if you see, if you see some problem uh, let's just put this in terms of PV and RT. If it gives you like, I don't know, pressure, volume, and temperature, and and uh, like, like let's just say it gives you, I don't know, the information for like, I think in that same problem, uh, for moles of N2 gas, or you can solve for moles of N2 gas, and so then you want to convert to something in like, I don't know, moles of lithium. 
then you would just use the information you're given, solve for moles of N2, and then use the internal mole ratios from the given equation to solve for the moles of lithium. So yeah. Um, um, you should definitely know the kinetic molecular theory assumptions and these are going to be that um, all particles are point masses which means that you can kind of think of them as like as just like as just like what it says just points like there's no uh, actual size to them is what you can assume and you can also say this is as, as they have negligible volume um, yeah and then the second one is going to be the I'll just abbreviate kinetic energy average is proportional to the temperature so the higher the temperature the higher the average kinetic energy of a mixture of gas and then the last one is that all collisions between gas particles are elastic, which means that um, which means that these gas particles do not attract each other. That's another another big thing that is that they have no attraction between each other. And those are the three um, the three assumptions we have for the kinetic for, for kinetic molecular theory. Jesus. Um, uh, so another, another f formula or equation you should have is, uh, is on the worksheet, the VRMS or like the average, um, molecular speed, I think, uh, of a gas particle is equal to three RT over molar mass where R is the other R, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, and then molar mass in uh, kilograms per mole. So on the periodic table, it's given in grams per mole, so just divide that number by 1,000, and then you have the molar mass in kilograms per mole. Um, I guess another conceptual thing about um, ideal gases that we can, I guess we didn't really write anything, um, that the ideal gas law is best at really high temperature and low pressure. Um, uh, I guess no going, I guess, to, to, to thermo dynamics um just some i guess nomenclature or like things that you should probably know what they mean so if it says uh i guess like work done on system this corresponds to um a positive work for the system and then when work done by the system oh my goodness and that corresponds to a negative work um he uh released corresponds to um a negative q of the system he absorbed uh, corresponds to a positive Q, um, and there like there there could be some scenarios, um, just like on the mock exam where it asks you to say if like the delta energy or the, if the delta E of a system is like positive or negative given some set of conditions, um, and you should see like if like if you have like a positive Q and a negative W, then like it's going to be indeterminate unless you know values. If they're both positive, it's positive and then um if they're both negative it's going to be negative uh, energy and that leads us into this uh this delta e of the system 
is going to be equal to Q plus W, and that corresponds to, to the conclusions we just made. Um, Q is equal to MC delta T. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's just pretty standard. We've done a lot of that, of the, Kelle or of the, um, the Q equals MC delta C stuff. Um, you should know that in general, uh, M mass in grams, in grams, uh, C in, um, it's going to be joules per gram Celsius, and then delta T in Celsius or Kelvin, because we're just measuring the temperature change, and they change by the same magnitude, so that's fine. Um, let's see. Again, I guess just know what these mean. Like Q means like a, a heat kind of transfer, either lost or gain. Heat, heat capacity is like, I like to think of it as a, as a substance's resistance to temperature change. Um, how much heat it can absorb, I guess, or how efficiently. Um, and then temp temperature change is, you know that, just temperature change or mass is mass. Um, and understand that for the calorimetry problems, whenever we measure the temperature change, we can't, or in general, in most reactions, we can't measure the temperature change directly from the reaction because it's happening on a uh, very small scale. So we're measuring the temperature change of like the surroundings, like the water and some of those problems that we've seen. So in those cases, Q of the, re or I guess, so in, in those cases, whenever we measure the temperature change of like water, I guess, we're actually finding Q of the calorimeter. And then, this is equal to the negative of the of Q of the actual reaction, and then you can just divide it by a negative one and solve for Q of the reaction. Um, just remember that delta H of the reaction is equal to Q of the reaction when pressure is constant or whatever. Um. Uh, I guess another note, whenever you're using Q equals MC delta T, um, watch out for the units because for, like probably 99% of the time you'll be given the C in, in, uh, in units of joules per gram Celsius and it may give you some heat, um, some heat, like if you're solving for mass or you're solving for temperature change, it may give you this Q in kilojoules and then you need to convert that to Q in terms of joules, just so all the units cancel out and you, at the end, you're only left with grams. Um, um, I guess you should also probably practice if you're struggling with, uh, with like the Hess's law thing, you should know like the, the rules for this. Um, when you flip the reaction, flip sign, if multiplying a reaction by a constant, multiply delta H reaction um, by same constant. So if you, and, and, and I didn't say divide or multiply just because like if you were to have a reaction, it's the same thing as, uh, as multiplying it by one half. Um, and then in that case, you would multiply the, the delta H of reaction by one half. So yeah. Um, uh, you should be confident with like, given a set of like two or three reactions, uh, rearranging those to solve for one general reaction. Um, you should know that um, in another, I guess, case when you're trying to find the delta H of a reaction, you can use the delta H uh, formations. And in that case, you're going to be, uh, there's a horrible sigma, but um, that, that's a sigma, like like a add everything up, the moles of products um, times the delta H formation 
minus the moles of reactants, uh, delta H formation, another sigma. Um, and this basically just means that I say given, I don't know, like A plus B creates, I don't know, two A B. Um, that is that is a good one. Uh, I don't know. A A B plus C D creates A D plus B C. Um, let's just say like two and three moles. That, that this is imbalanced, but this is just for the uh, for the example. So you so you do twice. Um, since we do products minus reactants, so you do twice. Um, twice the delta H of formation of AD plus three times the delta H of formation of BC minus uh, one times delta H of formation of AB plus one times delta H of formation of CD. So you basically just want to add up the, um, add up the delta H formations that'll be given to you in some, tor in some sort of table and also multiply each one of those by the coefficients in the, uh, in the balanced reaction. Okay. And then, remember, I guess you should remember these equations um, for light and stuff like that. So C is equal to um, lambda, lambda times V, where lambda is wavelength of something of light, and then frequency is, or V is the frequency of that. Um, frequency, um, and frequency is going to be units of 1 over s or hertz, same thing. And this is going to be most likely in nanometers. And uh, one thing one thing to be aware of is that for this c, the speed of light, this constant, um, you'll be given this, I'm pretty sure. This is in units of meters per second. Um, and this is in, and this wavelength right here is in uh, nanometers. So you want to convert that to meters before you do any calculations. Um, and then the last thing is the energy of a photon, a packet of light, packet of energy, whatever. Um, that is going to be equal to HV, where H is Planck's constant, which is also equal to, if you look back at this equation, if, if you solve for um, for frequency for V, which is actually new, you're going to be uh, you're going to be left with H um, C over lambda, and then you'll also be given H Planck's constant. And this is going to be 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. The C we already said is over there. And then um, lambda, it'll probably also again be given to you in some sort of um, nanometer for the wavelength. So also convert this um, to meters because again, we're using C. So already in meters and that's just kind of the SI unit. That's, it's just, it's safe to go back to meters whenever you can. And uh, yeah. Good luck.